Hello and welcome to the Social Media Mixer. My name is Stacy Kinney and tonight we're talking about building your brand with a blog. It's brought to you by MyBrandingSystem.com which I am very excited to be affiliated with because it is a product of extreme value and on this very subject talking about blogging it's a great way to help people get started if you don't know what you're doing you don't want to take the time um, how to market it just an incredible system but for those of you that want to learn how to do it on your own then you're going to learn that this evening and there's going to be a little bit for everybody so let's go ahead and get started you know why would you want to have a blog for your business well a blog is the best way to create a community around your business now we're hearing a lot about uh, fan pages on Facebook which is just incredible the growth that has happened with Facebook um, I definitely believe that that's maybe something you want to do to create that community but a blog is an absolute must and there's a lot of reasons for that and you're gonna figure that out as we go along but unlike social networking sites you actually have more room on your blog to get into more details you know you have these posts and these things that you can make that you can't do over there and it's really kind of your hub your home base where everything comes back to you and you have more control and more flexibility uh, with your blog your blog can serve as a sales funnel where it can direct people to your products and services so ultimately that's what you want to do right you want to make your blog work for you and convert it into sales so here's a picture you can see of a sales funnel now the first thing that you want to do uh, is create awareness you know you've got to have an internet presence you've got to be there for people to even find you so when you think about this day and age I mean how critical it is to have a web presence so whether you're a real estate agent an insurance professional home-based business you know a sales professional marketing whatever it is I mean just think about it when you go out on the internet um, and that's probably where you go to, to look for things right so if you're not there how are people going to find you so first of all you've you've got to be there for people to be aware and then the second part of the sales funnel is creating interest okay so now that you have this blog now that you're out there and you have a presence how are you gonna have people become interested in you you know and that comes with your content your message what are you providing is it valuable is it what people want to know your target market and then next desire do they desire to want what you have your product your service and take action you know ultimately buy your product is it going to convert into business for you so this is kind of what it looks like and what you want to think about you know the long term of what you're trying to create here now blogs are easily branded and what I mean by that I want to give you a couple of examples or a few examples here uh, here's some colleagues of mine actually that work with me at mybrandingsystem.com and Michelle Malpass you can see she's created something here living the virtual lifestyle the little palm trees and dolphins the flip-flops you know so this is her persona this is what she wants and this is something that you know you you could do for yourself and of course here's my blog with stacykinney.com rock your business online uh, just a couple of more here like I said now this is a uh, more professional done uh, blog doesn't mean that this is what you have to have you can get started doing on your own which is what I'm going to show you tonight but this is just the route that that I chose and uh, you might understand a little bit more why once we go through this presentation a blog can help you build a re reputation as an expert and blogs can lead to opportunities to cross over into other media such as television and radio and here's the perfect example now when I talk about you know the reputation of an expert it's interesting because I've come across some blogs where I've just been like oh my gosh this person is so smart they know all this stuff and then getting to know them hey they're just a normal average person like myself they're learning like I am you know and and but it's perception and and that's really what's so interesting interesting about all of this and what a blog can do for you because if you look at this I was actually asked to be on this TV show with Suzanne Boyd it was a local show here in South Florida and you can look um, on the screen where it says Stacy Kenny social media and Twitter expert well I didn't tell them to put that and I certainly didn't perceive myself to be this social media expert this was about a year ago I had literally just started my blog uh, I think a few months earlier and been doing social media for you know for a little while so I started down this whole path but interesting 
that it's about perception. So she seemed to think that I was an expert, asked me to be on the TV show, and so that's what I'm talking about, how these can lead to other opportunities. And to me, I thought it was absolutely amazing. And I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm being asked to be on this show. So those kinds of types of things can happen. And I've heard numerous of, um, other stories of people that I know that through their blog and their information and things that they've done, they've received speaking engagements, been paid, you know, highly compensated, just amazing things. Uh, the search engines love blogs, which make it easy to gain traffic when you're optimizing your blog correctly. So there's a big difference between a website and a blog. You know, back in the day, it's like, oh, you got to have a website. Well, a website is, is pretty stagnant. You know, it's not being indexed as much. You know, a blog is is um, it's fresh. You're constantly adding more content. It's um, people are leaving comments. You know, there's some action happening there. You know, so therefore it's getting indexed. And if you can optimize it correctly, you can get a lot of traffic. So setting up your blog. Now, this is the part that's going to be for the people that say, you know what, I want to do this on my own. Okay, so for those of you that don't have any interest in that, just sit back and relax and appreciate um, the fact that you're maybe paying someone <laughs> and uh, that you don't have to do all of this because there's definitely some things involved here. But you need to understand that you are receiving a huge value if you are having someone help you because you have two options when setting up your blog. Now, you can either have it self-hosted or you can have third-party hosting. And third-party hosting is free so if you say look I absolutely don't want to spend a dime I'm going to try the free route you want to think wordpress.com and blogger.com so these are the two sites that you can go right now and you could set up for free however of course there's always that you know you get what you pay for sometimes these third-party hosts limit the type of content that can be put on the servers and also, you want to be aware of like if something happens, which happened uh, recently, a company Vox.com was recently sold to Six Apart, and they shut down. So you know you're not really hosting it yourself. Something could happen to your blog and your content, and you you wouldn't want that to happen. It's just something. To be, I don't think these companies are going anywhere, but you never know. I mean. Hosting a blog yourself is going to require more effort to set up, but I really think that the payoff is going to be so much greater because you have total control over the branding, the content, and the marketing of your blog. Now, for branding purposes, I'm going to recommend that you host it yourself on your own domain because it's going to look so much more professional than if you have it on this third party. And what do I mean by that? This kind of example where it's your your name dot blogspot dot com. And here's a perfect example. I mean, that really looks very amateurish. Now, I went to this site and I thought, wow, Cake Rex, you know, they had a beautiful site. But this, why not just have cakerex.com? or you know something of that but why do you have to have that third party I mean you're advertising for them when we're talking about branding that's why I have stacykinney.com so go out and get your name your business name your concept name and do it now before somebody else gets it so that's what I, where I'm getting to purchase the domain name um, I've happened to use GoDaddy. There's some other ones that you can use um, to, to brand your name, your business name. And you can also get the host, uh, the hosting, whether it's GoDaddy, HostGator, Namecheap, or so forth. So it's two separate things that you're going to do. If you're going to buy a domain, like StacyKinney.com, I pay 8 to $10 a year for that, not much. But then the second thing that you would need to do is purchase uh, a web hosting. So... Um, if you pay for it by the year, it's usually $60 to $100 or whatever it is. It could be $10 to $12 a month. You know, it just ranges depending on the services that you're going to get to actually um, house your website and all that information. You know, it has to sit somewhere on a server, and that's what you're going to pay for. Now, you can use um, what I suggest is WordPress. Um, for your blog software. It's the easiest to set up and learn how to use um, across the board. It's just more people know how to do it. There's a lot of software and plugins and things. It's just much more flexible. And uh, many of the web hosts have like a one-click installation process, so it'll automatically install it for you. But if for some reason you can't 
hit the auto easy button and make it install, then you're going to have to do it manually. And this is where it could get a little interesting and a little technical. Um, you would need to download an FTP tool such as FileZilla or Qt FTP. And this is going to allow you to upload files to your web hosting account. Now here's just a little example and a screenshot because I'm very visual and I like to show you. So here's FileZilla and you can see pretty easily it says right here you can download it, boom, there you go. Although, I mean, it's maybe not always that easy, <laughs> just depends how technically inclined you are. Now, uh, download Word, WordPress from the WordPress.org site. So you might want to write this down if you're looking to do it yourself. Um, WordPress.org because it has a step-by-step -step instruction for installing the software on your site but please be sure to do it perfectly because you could end up with problems you know some kind of technical glitch if you don't do it this way you know we're talking about coding and software and installing you know you just who knows so just make sure to follow the directions and take your time now WordPress has many different themes that you can choose from for free on their site at this wordpress.org you know however I recommend that you either purchase a professionally designed theme or have one custom made you know I chose to have one custom made uh, with my branding system originally my first blog I didn't I did choose a professional theme I paid money for it I got very frustrated um, going through learning all of this stuff I, I ultimately ended up paying someone to help me install and do all of these things and probably paying what I ended up paying now for a just a beautiful blog design uh, much more professional so but that's up to you you know um, here's wordpress.org a screenshot as you can see right here you can download it and then up here at the top under extend there's theme so then you could pick out a, a theme and get started with this you know and you could always if this is the only way you had to get started then you could always transfer it later um, although I do recommend other ways if you have the means setting up your blog now I love this picture here with the guy the computer the smoke coming out because I just felt like this was me except there was smoke coming out of my ears and my head because that's kind of the point I got to with setting up my blog um, I just only had so much pace, patience and I'm fairly technical but I just realized for me and my business that my time was better spent doing other things you know setting up my blog was not making me any money I needed to be out making sales talking to people doing other things in my business so that's why I chose the route that I did ultimately to hire a professional the criteria for a good theme is that it must fit with your business brand it needs to be professional and give you enough space to advertise your business. You want to be able to integrate your social tools and entice visitors. I mean, that's the point, to attract more people to your blog. Now, for a professional look, you know, um, they say it's better to use light colors like white, cream, gray, in contrast with blue, green, or black. Well, I obviously didn't take that advice because I have a nice yellow, a little flashy. But, um, of course, that's, that's up to you. It's up to your target market and how you want to build your brand. But um, if you're in the real estate business or financial business, you know, some people say, oh, I want to go with a more conservative blue or, you know, whatever it is. So you just have to think about and um, what's right for you. Customize your header to your business name. And you can do this yourself using a program like Photoshop or hire the professional. You know, if you're good with that stuff and doing graphics, you know, more power to you. Definitely fill out your About Me page so people know all about you. And once your blog is set up, you're going to want to install plugins. Now you're thinking, what in the world are plugins? Okay, this is what's going to assist you in building your brand and creating a community around your business. And it's nothing more than just tools and software, things that are going to make it easier for you to navigate, do things, you know, just more flexibility in your blog. And I'm going to go over a few here in a minute uh, to give you an idea of some, some things that you might want to use. But I definitely recommend that you sign up for FeedBurner and integrate it into your blog so you can track RSS subscribers. Um, for some of my newbies, you know, what in the world is this RSS? This is on, like on my blog right now or any blog that you go to, there's generally an icon. It's a, um, 
it's an orange little tab, you know, RSS, and you can click that and you can ask to receive these posts by email or maybe if you have an RSS uh, reader. And you'd want this on your blog because you want people to be able to subscribe to it because they want to get all your latest posts. And this can track and you can see who has subscribed to your blog. Okay, on your About Me page, and this is just something funny I wanted to add. You see at the top, trust me, I'm a social media expert. You know, because really, I don't, I don't know who can call themselves an expert this day and age. It's so new. But I do want to give you what some of the experts are saying out there about some things here. And also give you my take. And the word on the street is to create a short biography of yourself on your About Me page. And the bio, which I agree, should detail your expertise. Okay, yeah, that makes sense and include a professional photo of yourself. Well, I don't know. For me, I'm not sure. I think it's kind of your choice. If you're going for the stay at home market, mom, you know, whatever, you know, maybe you want a little bit more relaxed, you know, it just depends on who you are. Um, and maybe that's who you want to be, this professional go to, you know, whatever. But here's my professional photo on my About Me page. Voila, yes. There's me with the afro, and it's not just a picture. It's my husband and myself in a little dance video, so we're getting our groove on. So that's my professional photo. <laughs> you can say it's my choice. And then I have one of my kids, and I love these little jib-jab things, and this is fun because this is who I am. This is me, and I want to portray, you know, building my brand. It's, it's I want to be transparent. I want people to know who I am. So when, you know, when they read through and, and go through my blog, it's not just Stacy Kinney, Kinney, the social media marketer and this business person. No, you know who I am as a person, as a whole, and and that's who I want to be. You know, I don't I don't have anything to hide. I want to be totally transparent and be able to be myself. Most importantly, and I agree on this, your bio should focus on how your knowledge and expertise can help your blog visitors. So you know, what is your blog about? How are you going to help people? Why do they want to come there? You know, that kind of thing. That's definitely important. And if need be, you can include contact information for you. Um, I, I did this up until very recently because I think that's probably why I was getting a lot of spam. I mean, I didn't realize it. But instead, you could just put contact me and put a link to your contact form on your blog, which is exactly what I did. You only want to put relevant information um, here on your About Me page. And then I added, you know, well, what what is relevant anyway? Because that's really going to determine and be determined by you. You know, is it all going to be totally professional? Or are you going to leave some stuff out? You know, that kind of thing. Well, it's, it's up to you. And then a lot of the experts say, well, your bio should be no longer than 400 words. And I say, really? Um, hmm, maybe I got that wrong because as you can see on the latest screenshot here, my word count on my About Me page is 1,311. So I kind of missed that mark. Although I've been thinking about it lately, maybe I should um, condense it a little bit, but I don't know. I've actually had people that commented and said, wow, Stacy, I had no idea that you did all of these things and you know, but I didn't feel like I should leave it out. Like, you know, wow, I've, I have done a lot of things. I'm an entre entrepreneur, you know. I'm, I'm not going to just give you all the best parts about, hey, no, this is me. This is what, I, what I've done. So, I don't know. Like I said, your brand equals you. And that's really what I want you to take away from this is, yes, do research. There are going to be experts or things that are perceived as experts. Listen to a lot of different people you know do your own research and then come up with your own opinions about who you want to be what your brand and how you want to be perceived because we're all different but th that's that's the point that I really want to drive home because it's not about me telling you you need to be professional and you need to do it this way you know it's, it's not about that because I've seen some blogs out there quite frankly I have no idea what possessed these people to do it they're insane they're crazy but people love them that's who they want to be and that's okay not what I'm gonna do but hey that's okay now, once again, this is going to be for the people who want to do it completely on their own and the little technical stuff here. You might want to pull out a pen and paper. I'm just going to go over what I think are some good WordPress plugins to have. Um, the first one is Facebook Likes. Well, 
the the growth with Facebook is phenomenal. I mean, I almost like took my breath away here talking about it, but it's like, it, you know, why wouldn't you want to have this? Where if somebody is reading a post, it basically allows them to hit that little like button, and then it it posts it to their wall for everyone to see, and then all their friends and family say, "Wow, what is this about? This is pretty interesting. Let me click on here." Those people come over to your blog, they check it out. There you go. Voila, traffic. Perfect. Um, uh, great plugin to to put on your blog. So the next one is Akismet. Helps to manage your spam. Now, a lot of people like to go out there and put these comments and backlinks and sales pages and a lot of spam. So you definitely want to avoid this. We don't have all day to be weeding out spam. So this is a really great plugin. Um, all in one SEO pack. Now, this is going to really help you to optimize your blog for those search engines. So when people are going out there on Google and saying, I'm looking for this, and they're putting in these keywords, this is really going to help it so that people can actually find you. Dashbar, this allows you to move between the front of your blog and the back of your office with ease. And then secure and accessible PHP contact form. This is just a fancy word for contact form, but that's what it's called. So it's the contact form that prevents spam from getting through. So you can tell there's a quite a, a couple here that you need to do because spam is definitely a problem. And then the tweet Mimi retweet button. So if you're not even familiar with twi Twitter, you're probably saying, what in the heck is this? But it's um, <laughs> it's kind of like that Facebook like button. If you're on Twitter, um, but you go into somebody's blog and you say, you click it, then it tweets it out. So it, it allows all the people to see it in the tweet stream. And here's a perfect example of it. Uh, this was a blog post that I did um, a little bit ago, um, why video marketing is an effective way to reach your customers. And as you can see, the little arrow pointing there, I've already had 172 people actually tweet this out. You know, So they thought it was good and they wanted to share it with their community. So you wanna make it very easy and accessible for people to share because that's gonna drive more traffic to your blog. Now, uh, Sexy Bookmarks is another one, and you've probably seen it right here, like this um, uh, screenshot, sharing is sexy, sharing is caring, wealth, whatever it is, and it has up to 50 other sites on here, like Dig and Stumble Upon, so people can click on it and share. Um, another related post plugin is that you can have it show about similar posts, and here's the screenshot. So at the bottom, this is the, the bottom of my blog, and I actually changed. I used to have the sexy bookmarks, but it was causing some conflicts um, with some other things that I had, and that's definitely something that I wanted to point out because a lot of these plugins, sometimes these developers make a plugin and then they go off and they never update it or do anything, yet WordPress has been updated many times. Or maybe they develop a plugin and it conflicts with another plugin. So just be aware whether you're managing your own blog or even if someone else is managing it and helping or you've paid for it, that there can be conflicts and it's not their fault, it's not your fault, but it's from that development standpoint. But this is a cool thing because when someone's finished reading the post, it says, oh, well here, how about you read this? How to use attraction marketing, the do's and don'ts of a successful internet business, you know? So it keeps people on your blog longer, viewing and getting to know you more. And like, here's the new plugin that I have um, and that didn't conflict, so it looks a little bit different, but that's just another way to get people to stay and, and learn more. And just a few more here, but Google XML sitemaps. Basically, and here's a picture, because I love pictures. It's just gonna help you to navigate around your blog better, um, make it easier for the search engines to index your content, and you definitely wanna have that happen. Uh, math comment spam protection. You gotta love some of these wordy things, right? It just increases the spam protection because there's a lot of spam out there, you need it. And then here's the last one. It's called Pretty Link, light version. It's really great for hiding affiliate links or long links and encourage people to, to click them. So if you have a really long one, you want to shorten it. Or even, have you ever seen those links where it's like uh, www.xyz.com forward slash 254 affiliate. So, you know, some people are hesitant. They're like, oh, well, they're just trying to sell me something. Well, this way you can make it a little bit more 
um, appealing, I guess you would say, for people to actually click on it and buy your buy your affiliate product, you know. Now branding your blog, talk a little bit about this. Um, your, your blog's brand begins with a physical presence. So you definitely want to take the time to pick out the theme and the color scheme that's going to be attractive to your target market. You know, and you obviously want it to be attractive to you as well. And like I said, it depends on what industry you're in or what people think. Maybe if you're very eco, earth friendly, then you probably want to go with the earth colors and the greens and so forth. You know, maybe if you're in the financial uh, realm or professional, you want to be that conservative blue. You know, I don't know. There's just things that you think that are attractive and in your target market and look at what other people are doing and get ideas and inspiration. Use an icon that's recognizable and sums up your brand. Now obviously if it's just you, like it is me, StacyKinney.com, then my face, my picture is my brand, okay? But if you have a company, you might have a company logo and you want to make that recognizable. Integrate your social networks into the blog. Now, um, this is huge because, as a matter of fact, I had somebody today that um, contacted me through Facebook, and I had no common friends, and I said, well, you know, I'm not really sure how I know you or why you'd like to connect. I would like to know a little bit more about you because, you know, I just don't connect with everybody on Facebook. I have no idea. And he said, oh, well, I went to your blog, and I um, was reading some information, and I just wanted to hit the connect, so we connected right there. And um, so it's a great way to, and I have no idea how he got to my blog, which is really another interesting story. But you definitely want to have where people can connect with you there. It's a little widget on your sidebar that you can place in, and then this way they can, you know, connect to all your other social networks. The content should be of interest to your target market. You, know, you want to try to stick with one or two main topics, and, um, you know, for example, if it's marketing and business development, or if you are in the real estate profession, you might want to talk about tips for buying a home, how to stage a home, how to fix this up, the foreclosure market, whatever it is, something local to your market. Um, then, you know, and still it can be personal to you too. You could be someone in the leader, as a leader in your community, you know, but you definitely want to kind of keep around those topics of, of what your target market is. The tone of your writing should be yours. You know, if you're a funny person, then incorporate a humor. When people come to your blog, they should be getting to know you. I mean, this is a perfect example of why I do some of the things that I do um, with my blog that maybe the experts would say that you shouldn't do. But, you know, I just happen to think that, you know, I want to be me. And, uh, and my blog is a reflection of me. So a few blogging tips. The more often you blog, the better. However, I'm going to definitely recommend that you pick a blogging schedule. Now, when I first started blogging, I only did it once a week. I mean, that to me was like enough. Um, now I'm trying to do it once a day or maybe three times a week, you know, but I'm just, you know, just be consistent with it. And if you're just getting started, then maybe that's where you want to start once a week, two times a week, whatever. Consistency is going to be better than quantity because then you're following and people are going to know, you know, what to expect. Definitely recommend this. Take the afternoon off, you know, just kind of schedule out a couple of hours, whatever it is, so that you can make a plan. I mean, go figure that. Making a plan for your business? Yeah, a marketing strategy? It's exactly what I'm telling you to do. Think about what you're going to do for the next month, the next couple of weeks, whatever it is, and come up with a content schedule. These are the things that you want to talk about. You know, this is going to prevent you from drawing that blank. If you're waiting every day or that one time a week to say, oh my gosh, what am I going to put on my blog? Then you're rushing around, life gets in the way, you don't do it, you know, that kind of thing. So the, the thing I suggest is sitting down and you can even write these posts in advance and schedule them. And I do this. So I have things scheduled out on certain days to post for weeks to come. And this is definitely going to help you be so much more efficient. Like I call it getting in the zone. It's like I can sit here and say, okay, I'm going to work on content. And this is what I'm going to do. And I want to go over these subjects this week. And I want to mix it up a little bit here. And just plan it out. And it will make your life so much easier. Now, some of your content should be evergreen. Now, what I mean by that is it should be high quality and it apply for years after the day you post it. An everlasting quality. 
Now, an example, like look at the one I talked about um, earlier about video marketing and 172 people. I've had that one up for a little while, but I still have people, as a matter of fact, today um, reposting that and tweeting it out and a lot of traffic from it. And then I have people finding it through Google search or whatever it is. So you want to think about some of those things and topics that people would always want to know about. And then sign up for an email service and begin building your list. And this is something I'm in the process of doing right now. I know I need to do it. I've known it. <laughs> you know, but for those of you out there, you know, maybe just getting started, I want to recommend there is a, it's called MailChimp.com. MailChimp.com. And it's free and it has an autoresponder. It even has the code that you can put in your sidebar on your blog to do the, the opt-in. So if you want to have a newsletter, you're basically asking people, to opt into your list so that you can market to them in the future. Now generally you might want to give something away for free. I'm in the middle of or just finishing whatever an ebook and so that's going to be my giveaway to have people you know sign into my email list so therefore in the future I plan on sending them quality content. You know building value and trust and that's the name of the game that sales funnel where ultimately they can make a decision that they want to work with me. They want to work with the products and, and services that I'm, you know, affiliated with, that kind of thing. So that's the goal. Um, if you're stuck for content, then you can post articles from directories such as um, easing articles on your site or ezine. I'm not sure how it's exactly performed. So go to ezinearticles.com. And this is a great way um, and just make sure you follow the guidelines. You can go there. Like if I were going to look up social media marketing um, and find an article, I have to keep it entirely in, in, um, as it was. Like with the author and everything, I can't repost it as my own. That would be plagiarism. But um, And then just keep it intact. Uh, but it's a great way to generate some more traffic. And um, since if you don't want to write blog posts every day and one of the things I love about my branding system is we actually have a couple of tools like that where they just automatically we have campaigns set up and they just drop right into my back office and I can pick which articles I like so that really helps me to get some more content out there where I'm not having to come up with all of it on my own so just some ideas there for you to think about um, a couple more blogging tips you know, I recommend you definitely reply as much as you can on your blog. It's going to help build a community. You know, when somebody leaves a comment, then you leave a comment back. If there's some interaction, this also helps you get up in the search engines because it's saying, hey, there's some action here, you know, on this blog. So the more comments that you have, it's going to create more traffic as well. Now, uh, making your posts more interesting uh, by incorporating videos. Now, this is, to me, it's huge. And I just did a, a webinar on that last week about videos, and I just think it's incredible. I mean, think about it right now. If you went to a blog post and it has a video and it has text, which one are you going to go for first? Nine times out of ten, people will click the video. Video is extremely powerful, and this is a great way to reach your, your audience. So I definitely recommend that you do that. And even if you're not making a video, then you can pull relevant videos from YouTube or Vimeo, what, any of these other places. So let's say you're going to make a post um, about something motivational today. Well, then you could find a motivational video and add that to your text and just spice it up a little bit. And that would be some, uh, you know, a great post. Create content around controversial topics and attract attention and links. Now, that's kind of a fine line about how far you want to go, but um, you definitely can generate some stuff with that. Um, but really pay attention to what's happening in your industry and, um, and things that are trending, you know, what's kind of hot and hot topics and so forth. And of course, to save time and money, for any of you guys that know me out there, I love to save time and money. And I uh, definitely recommend that if you're that type of person, you know, take advantage of the services of a professional company who can do this work for you. As I said before, you're running a business. You really need to think about outsourcing things and thinking if you're great at this kind of stuff and you love doing it and you're very technical, then then great. This is this is your thing. You know, but this isn't going to make you money. What's going to make you money is out there, you know, making sales, building relationships, marketing, talking to people. So if you want to spend your time where the money is to be made, and, and doing that, marketing your blog, marketing yourself, and leave this to someone else, then hey, 
I say the easy button right here. Have somebody do it for you, which is exactly what we do with mybrandingsystem.com. You have no idea what to do. They set it all up for you, put you on a system, and actually teach you how to market it. It's an incredible value. Um, but hey, there, there's other places you can get it done out there. I'm just telling you, this is the option that I chose, and I think it's a great one. Um, so that's totally up to you if you want to do it yourself. So basically to summarize this tonight, and as far as homework, which isn't too much, I just want you to think about that. So is it going to be this way? Is it going to be that way? Do you want to dare to do it yourself? Like I said, maybe you love that. That's exactly what you want to do. Um, you know, hey, go for it. But it's going to take you some time. It can be a little bit of a learning curve. And, and that's okay, as long as you know what you're in for. And maybe you have a little bit better understanding tonight. You know, I'm trying to, to go through this pretty quickly. And you could have a few roadblocks. But hey, it can be done. I promise you, I went down that road, but I only went so far. I just said, you know what? This, this I've had enough. <laughs> and so, <coughs> excuse me. Or, easy button, this way. Hire a professional to do it. You know and focus on what's gonna make you money either way I'm just saying do it just do it whether you do it yourself whether you hire somebody to do it I think that right now it has never been more critical than to get your online presence going get your brand building because I mean, the days of going down the, the street and knocking on your neighbor's door to say, hey, what restaurant do you recommend? Or, hey, do you have a, a you know, what kind of product or what kind of, it doesn't happen anymore. Guys, think about it. What do you do for everything that you need? You go online. Are people finding you? You know, are they finding your product and service? I mean, so, you know, where, where did, what is your presence going to look like a year from now, two years from now? I mean, I don't think the internet is going anywhere. I don't think one day they're just going to, the little switch is going to go off and there's, oh, the internet's done. Social media is over. Game over. No, it's not going to happen. So all I have to say is to urge you, either do it yourself, have somebody do it, but just do it. I'd love nothing more to work with any of you, um, my branding system. If somebody um, got you on this webinar that's affiliated with my branding system, get back with them. Or, you know, if you directly with me, we'll help you any way that we can. That's exactly what we do. Or if you just want to keep attending these free webinars and figuring out how to do it on your own, you can do that too. But definitely appreciate you tuning in and hope you'll stay tuned next week. Uh, the subject is going to be search engine marketing. So there you go, Google, you know, how does all this happen with this SEO and, and so forth. So really excited to share that with you next week. And just want to leave you with one last thing. Um, every step you take in life will leave a lasting impression. And this is just so true. And I want you to think about when you're out there building your online presence and your brand. These are things that I strive to be, that I am, that I try to be. You know, I'm so grateful and I have integrity. I always want to share, listen, teach others, you know, just be that type of person and you can always find me at stacykenny.com this presentation once again was brought to you by mybrandingsystem.com and I look forward to having you on next week and in the future and I'm always here to help thank you so much for your time bye bye